Hello friends, today I will tell you very a short story about a guy that happened already many years ago and despite the fact that in there will be nothing supernatural about it, however less without exaggeration, she was able to change life millions of people around the world. And everyone respects a successful person knows about it one way or another. And by the way, I think that each of you is also her must hear. It started back in the distant past 1914 when in a family of Jewish immigrants who based in Portland, USA, was born a boy named George. His father was a teacher mathematician and his mother was a linguist in the library. Now, I won't talk about George's early childhood because there is nothing surprising in it. He grew up like an ordinary boy of those years and was not particularly different from peers. The only thing that forced Guy literally to father intensively study geometry. Say that the guy was crazy about it, most likely it was difficult, but one way or another, he obeyed his parent and performed at first simple tasks that his father gave it to him and closer to finishing school and quite difficult. But be that as it may, of course, he was, an, the Subshinko, he was not a genius. And even despite that, he had a pretty good understanding of the science, which ultimately allowed him to enter the University of Maryland in the Department of Mathematics. But he was still an ordinary student who no different from hundreds and even thousands of the same like him. In addition, George often could afford to miss classes for which he was often punished with additional tasks. And by the way, from this moment, we got to the most important thing something that can change your perspective to the surrounding world. So imagine situation. University of California, Berkeley, 1939. Along one of the long corridors of the building, a 25-year-old student named George is running. In force for unknown reasons, he, as often happened before, his teacher's couple is late again, Jerzy Neumann, who teaches statistics. Moreover, is a full 20 minutes late. Barely catching my breath a few seconds before entering the audience, he quietly opens the door and enters it. The guy wants to be invisible, so quickly sits down at his desk, then turns his head trying to figure out what he missed. But looking the teacher's face shows that it's far away. This is not the best time to attract attention. By the time he appears in the audience on the board, the conditions of two problems have already been written. Yeah, it's simple, thought George. This is apparently homework for the next class. After which, the irresponsible student, I copied the problems into my notebook and started listening. Professor, further thinking about something of his own. Be that as it may, friends, already back after studying home, he regretted three times that I was late for this couple. The tasks were really complicated and the guy thought that probably missed something important. For solving them what the teacher told the student at the beginning of the lesson however there was nothing to be done and he had to rack his brain pretty hard a few days until the next statistic lesson in, in order to still solve them and do the homework exercise and looking ahead a little i'll say that everything turned out to be simpler and much more complicated simultaneously a satisfied student for several days later, I dropped by the professor and gave him notebook with homework. Teacher, in in turn, he only absent-mindedly accepted the notebook without taking his eyes off the board in which he was drawing something in front of the couple. Yes, they say good. Of course, he somehow didn't. Immediately, I was able to remember that I didn't ask the students anything similar and automatically put the notebook towards him on the table for inspection. It's almost been since then two weeks, and the answer from the professor is the guy didn't receive it. In addition, already on the next couple, the teacher approached George after class and said that his task was still under review, and this made the guy even more nervous. So how could such a long test be bad for him? And given the fact that it was on the nose semi-annual assessment. But what happened next? It's even difficult to explain in words. After some time time, George was called to the Dean's office. And before that, he had a bad feeling about the hike. But when he opened the door to the office, he saw that there were already several strangers in it, men and a statistics professor along with the Dean. It's hard to describe what we felt at that moment. Student, and perhaps he was already preparing for the worst, but the professor's words surprised him. Congratulations, George. How did you come up with this? Himself or did someone help? And although the guy couldn't figure it out, what are we talking about? 
but still asked, Professor, what are you talking about? After which, Jerzy Neumann showed, give him the same notebook with homework, and as it turned out, he did everything correctly except it wasn't homework at all. When, after some time, the professor checked the notebook that the student brought him, his eyes just popped out of his head. I remembered that really at the beginning of one from lectures told students the conditions of two of these tasks. But the whole point is that he wrote on, on the board the conditions of two unsolvable problems. Two tasks which were a riddle in which I could not solve not only the professor himself and the rest are outstanding the minds of that time, but also no one in the whole world. The most outstanding mathematicians puffed over them for several decades now, and even the most venerable, the scientists, just shrugged their shoulders. However, George just did not know that they were unsolvable, and by a coincidence of stupid circumstances, he simply listened to the part where it was said that no one had yet managed to solve them in the whole world. That's right, racking my brain just a few days, he finally solved them. There were professors in the Dean's office, U.S. Mathematical Academy of Sciences, who also arrived to congratulate the unfortunate student. And the full name of this hero is George Bernard Danzek, famous scientist of the 20th century and developer of the algorithm used in solving problems using the simplex method. He is also considered the founder linear programming and became the first winner of the von Neumann Prize in 1974. Later, our unfortunate student received a National U.S. Medal of Science and an honorary doctorate university of Maryland. And in the 1970s, he was elected to the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, National Academy of Engineering and American Academy of Arts and Sciences. After himself, he left many different works and books, but most likely this would not have happened. And most likely, no one would have heard his name if he then came to the couple on time. At least that's exactly what Professor George himself said with a smile, Danzig. Sometimes you can do the impossible than something no one has ever done before you. And all this is possible only if you don't convince ourselves that this impossible is impossible. If only I had come to class on time and heard that these problems are unsolvable. I, of course, never, I wouldn't be able to solve them. That's what George always said, Dan Sock. When they asked him how he liked it, all succeeded. Well, this story was taken into account all the bravest and most successful people, innovators of our time, billionaires and pioneers, all those who are simply sure that all the problems are only ours head and in the perception of what we are doing. Friends, do you think this is really so? The only problem is that we ourselves don't believe something or other is real. Be sure to write your opinion in the comments, but what do you personally think? Well, that's probably all for today. Evaluate video if you liked it and see you soon.